What's going on guys, John Elder here from Kodobi.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to move things with the mouse on the canvas with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, I'm going to show you how to move images around the canvas with your mouse. But before we get started, if you like this video, you want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, that's all my courses, videos, and books, for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, I showed you how to put images on the canvas and how to move them around with the arrow keys of your keyboard. In this video, I'm going to show you how to move them around by clicking and dragging with the mouse. So go ahead and close this. I've created a, a file called canvas underscore mouse. And so far, it's just the exact same file that we worked on yesterday. Uh, so if you didn't see that video from yesterday or a couple days ago, check the uh, playlist link in the comments below. You can check that out. But you can see it's just our basic starter Kinter code. I'm in the Sublime Text Editor. We're going to use the Git Bash Terminal. We have width and height and X and Y designated. We created a canvas that is you know, 600 by 400 and it's white and we put it on the screen and then we created that same image from you know last time, little stick figure of my head and that's located in th this location. And then we just put it on the screen with a mycanvas.create image, slap in some coordinates and uh, we're good to go. So these now are from the last video when we moved that image around using the arrow keys. So every time we use the left, right, up or down arrow keys, one of these functions gets fired, which is one of these functions, and then it, it moves. So I'm just gonna get rid of all of this because, well, get rid of the functions at least, because now we're gonna move it with our mouse. And you'll notice these root.bind left for the left arrow key, right for the right arrow key, up for the up key, down for the down key. We're gonna be using the same sort of thing, and let me just kind of uh, comment these out so they're still here so we can look at them if we want to. So to use our mouse button, we're going to use the same sort of binding thing. So let's go root dot bind. Or we've been doing root, you can also bind it straight to your canvas as well. You can go my underscore canvas, both work sort of either way. And uh, then we want to pass in. Now, instead of left, right, up or down for arrow keys for the mouse, we do B one dash motion and B is capitalized and M is capitalized. So B1 motion means the button of your mouse is clicked. So here we're dragging and dropping. Just regular motion on its own, I think, is just moving the mouse around. But if you want to actually engage the button, that's B1, button one motion, right? And same deal, we want to create some sort of function that we're, we're going to move this thing. So I'm just going to call this move. So now we can come up here and let's define move. And before we do that, let's talk about this. We've got the mouse and it's moving around. And as it moves around the screen, the X and Y coordinates are constantly changing based on wherever the mouse is at the moment. So before we actually do anything, let's create a label and output those X and Y coordinates just so we can see what's going on behind the scenes when we move the mouse around, right? That would be sort of useful to learn. So I'm gonna come down here and let's just create a label. Let's call it my label. And it's a label. And we want to put it in root and we want the text to equal something. For now, let's just put nothing. And now let's go my underscore label dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of 20 just to push it down a little bit. So we've now got this label, it's on the screen, but there's nothing in it. So up here in our move function, we need a colon there. Now, like the other functions with the arrow keys, we need to pass in the event. You could call this event or you could just call it E, call it anything you want. I'm just going to call it E. So as this pushed mouse moves around the screen, it's creating events. Every time it moves a little bit, that's a new event. And we could pass that event into this function. And now we can actually look at it by calling E.x and E.y. So that's the event x coordinate and the event y coordinate. Remember, our whole screen is a big X, Y sort of grid. X is horizontal, Y is up and down, vertical. So that's what that is. So let's now put these things on our label. So let's go my label.config. 
and we want the text to equal these two things. And let's just put uh, coordinates or something. And then we want to concatenate. And let's go, uh, this needs to be a string, so we'll convert it to a string because as it is now, this e.x is a number or a float basically. So let's go e.x. And uh, actually here, let's put x and a pipe or something. And then we want to concatenate again. Let's put a space and then let's say y pipe and concatenate again and again turn this into a string and let's call e dot y right okay so let's save this and run it again this is called canvas underscore mouse dot pi so let's go python canvas underscore mouse dot pi and now this guy won't move yet but we can see well that's kind of ugly with those pipes let's get rid of that real quick Instead of pipes, let's put uh, yeah, this will probably look nicer. Let's put a space next to each one of these, give it a little space. Okay, so let's save this. Now let's run it. So if I click here and hold the mouse button down and move my mouse around, you can see the coordinates are changing down there. So where are these X and Y coming from? Well, like I said, it's you know, a grid system, uh, side to side is X and up and down is Y. But if we click here and hold the mouse button and drag it up, you'll notice right here at the top is 600. That's the X and the Y is two. Right? So we're all the way over 600. But Y is basically zero up at the top because the Y coordinate starts right here. And the x coordinate starts down here, which is kind of weird. So if we click down here, see now x is zero ish, right? But y is 400 because the height is 400 and the width is 600. And as we go this way, x increases until it's at 600, which is the width of this thing. And if we go up, y becomes zero, or if we go down. So just sort of keep that in mind. It's just sort of interesting. We don't really care but it's good to understand what the mouse is doing as we're moving it around the screen coordinate wise, right? So, okay, we've got that. We don't really need it, but it's good to know. Now what we want to do is actually grab this guy and move it around. So how do we do that? Well, it's actually really easy. If we head back over to our code. To move with the arrow keys, we use the move function, but we don't really want to do that with the mouse. We probably could, and we can hack away to get the coordinates just the way we wanted to, but it's kind of a hassle and you can play around with that if you want. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy these two lines of code. These are the two, these are the lines of code that we use to actually create the image. So we created an image variable. We set it equal to a photo image of this file. And then we created a my image variable, which is a my canvas.create image. And then with an image of IMG. So I'm just going to copy this and bring it into our move function. And let's just paste it in. So here, this is an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. Instead of hard coding these in, let's just use our E dot X coordinates and our E dot Y. This will put the image wherever the mouse happens to be at the moment, right? And what image? Well, this IMG, which is just this guy right here. Now, whenever you put images in a function with Kinter, uh, sometimes they go wonky and it just doesn't work because Kinter has a garbage collection feature and it gets confused with images in functions sometimes. So a lot of times when you're using images in a function, you need to set the variable for that image as global or it just won't work. So uh, that's the case here. So let's go global and then IMG. All right. So that will take care of that. So, okay, let's save this. Now, this is not quite correct because we still have this anchor thing and you'll see what that does in just a second, but we can run this. And when we do, I click on this and start to drag it around. Now, notice my arrow key is at the top, top left corner of the image, right above my ear there. That's kind of weird, right? So I, I click it here, but then boom, the, the, the thing kind of jumps, the, the whole image kind of jumps and then my arrow's up here. Why is it doing that? Well, that's because of that Northwest anchor we gave it originally. So if we get rid of that and just put the two coordinates and the image itself and save this and run it. 
Now that doesn't happen anymore. The mouse stays wherever you clicked and you can drag this around and you can unclick to leave it, come back, grab it again, move it around, click it again. Now, something that's kind of weird about this is if you bring your mouse down here and click the button, boom, it jumps, right? So you may not want that. So I'll leave that to you to figure out how to fix that. And it, you might have to use the coordinate system uh, for moving an object like we did in the last video. But again, I'll, I'll let you play with that. Maybe we'll talk about that in a future video. But uh, yeah, very cool. It's just that easy to grab a thing and move it around. What we're doing here, every time there's an event firing, and in our case, an event firing in this instance is us moving the mouse while holding the mouse button down, then it's actually rewriting this image onto the screen super, super fast as we move it. And it, you know, and that's what it does. So check out the coordinate system, sort of study this, understand what's going on when you're moving your mouse around, because that's important to know. And uh, just that easy. Again, if we take off this global, if I save this and then close this and run it again, now I'm clicking and nothing's happening, happening at all. Because like I said, the garbage collection system in, in Kinter is confused by this image, doesn't know what to do with it, doesn't know what to make of it. And the whole thing just kind of shuts down. No error at message. It just doesn't work. So make sure to make that global and everything will work just fine. So again, B1 motion, that's the thing. If you don't want to do a mouse click at all, you just want motion, you can do it like this. If we save this and run it. Now I'm not clicking the mouse button, but as soon as I get into the canvas, boom, it grabs on and it won't let go. And I have to actually leave the canvas in order to, you know, <laughs> disengage. And that's no, not really fun. Uh, but you know, if that's what you want, you can definitely do it like that. Oh, we just want B1 motion. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, which really helps the channel out and I really appreciate it. And check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So it pays just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and we'll see you in the next video.